Grand Theft Auto 4 is one of the first games I can recall dissecting to figure out what it was trying to tell me. Most games lack subtlety when conveying their message. Usually, it's simple concepts like revenge, escaping from mundane life, protecting what's important to you, and the always popular, aren't big titties on attractive women nice? GTA 4 certainly covers all of those, and it's subtle about most of them, except when it comes to big titties. That part is pretty in your face. GTA 4 comes so very close to being profound, before it gets lost in the weeds of typical Grand Theft Auto game design, and hurriedly tries to wrap things up with a shot of the Statue of Liberty. Bravo, Rockstar. What a clever metaphor in your game about an immigrant. The series has always prided itself on tongue-in-cheek commentary about American culture, so who better than a relatable and tragic immigrant to give an outsider's perspective? Not that the game does anything interesting with that perspective. I don't recall any moment of actual culture shock. Nico seems more stunned that America is just as corrupt as his homeland, and fits in a little too quickly with that corruption despite his insistence on leaving the past behind for my liking. Nico's green card status serves more to isolate him in a land where he has nothing to fall back on except his criminal background and professional bowling skills. Compared to previous main characters like Claude, who might as well have been a goldfish that mob bosses would occasionally get the attention of by tapping on the glass, and Tommy Versetti, a temporarily embarrassed Scarface knockoff, Nico is far more relatable and the best main character the series has ever produced. With Nico, you genuinely get the sense he doesn't want to be doing any of this. He straight up says as much, before then going along with every harebrained criminal scheme someone puts in front of him with nothing more than an eye roll. His situation is used to highlight the importance of family and the people you choose to be around, and how the lack of such connections hollow you out and leave you vulnerable. Nico is repeatedly pulled onto a revolving carousel of criminals who have no one to rely on or ignore and distrust those that still care about them bereft of any strong convictions except for chasing their ambition. You get the sense that Nico would be just like them if not for his few remaining connections holding him back, whether they're a fresh immigrant or multi-generational Irish and Italian crime families. Anyone who turns at Nico to get things done has lost sight of what was truly important to them, and Nico will inevitably end up killing them once he's exasperatedly sighed too many times at them. Finding your place in a new country after your world is torn apart by incredibly violent trauma and the importance of family and friendship is strong material for any game, but it's uniquely enhanced and hindered by being the subject of a GTA game. Because it's a GTA game, Nico has a dish out all sorts of violent trauma to others while healing from his own, forging lasting bonds with a select few by going to strip clubs and fast food restaurants. It's not easy fitting remorse and sadness into a character who has to be allowed the privilege of driving on the sidewalk, remorselessly running over every pedestrian in his way, all while gamifying basic human social connections like grabbing a burger and becoming such good friends that they'll show up with a car full of guns whenever you need it. Rockstar would only manage to address this problem in GTA V with the inclusion of more main characters, who each represent a particular playstyle of GTA games, so you can have all the psychopathic degeneracy loaded into one, while another deals with a midlife crisis, and the third gets down to business while ignoring all distractions eliminating the weird disconnect you get when playing as only Nico. But GTA 4 was more of a prototype for GTA 5, both in plot and with the online mode which would subsume it. This game has three main characters, but the other two are locked behind DLC, never to really interact beyond a hello. All three of them play the common sense straight man who has to do incredibly violent crime for people they can barely tolerate. Daddy's back, you bitches! Daddy's back, you bitches! Daddy doesn't understand the role of a sub. I always wanted to make it big, own a nice place, get a dog, a house, live the dream. Like my cousin. Oh yeah? Yes, he's got the love. House, women, cars, parties. Did Cousin Roman never send you photos of his luxurious lifestyle of penthouses, fast cars, and sexy women? Given his character flaws, it seems odd to take him only at his word. Great job indiscreetly holding those smuggled diamonds up to the light for everyone in the kitchen who isn't on the deal to see. Did you want to take one last look at what you're smuggling before baking them into a cake? After the war finished, I couldn't get a job. Nobody could. Uh, so I uh, did some dumb things, got involved with some idiots. Nico has a curious way of talking about the Bosnian genocide he was a part of. I did stupid things too, but I didn't try to kill off an entire ethnic group among other atrocities. Immigration sure was easy in 2009. You could just walk off the boat like it's still the early 1900s at Ellis Island. Nico never even had to go through customs. Maybe you should go. Oh, maybe I should. Okay. Roman developed the ability to drink and drive responsibly, only after he already drove here drunk to pick up Nico. It was easy to forget how terrible GTA games used to play, when most of our memories of them left out inputting cheat codes to give yourself every weapon and infinite health, so you could go on an hour-long murder spree with six wanted stars in between missions. 
If you wanted to enjoy the older games, you practically had to use cheat codes since the on-foot gameplay was so terrible, you'd be killed every time you rounded a corner and half a dozen aimbot enemies would instantly unload on you, forcing you to rebuy all of your weapons after each death or being busted by the police. I'd go as far as saying they were downright unplayable even by the standards of their time. GTA was essentially a car game that had an on-foot section bolted on. The moment you stepped onto the curb, you were stuck with a terrible lock-on targeting system that would never target the right person, along with zero camera control and inventory management. GTA 3 didn't even come with an in-game map, expecting you to unfold the one in the manual. GTA 4, on the other hand, is the first game that made being on foot not feel absolutely terrible. Even though Nico will fall over at the slightest bump to his shin thanks to the Euphoria physics engine, there's a rudimentary cover system for shootouts. He can mantle over walls, swim, and control the camera with a right stick. But while improving the on-foot portion of the game, Rockstar screwed up vehicles. The physics engine makes every car drive like a brick that's been convinced as a salmon swimming upstream during spawning season. Among the first things I noticed when playing the game upon release was how difficult it was to do something basic like turning left and right without smashing into a streetlight. Just show me around the city. Fucking terrorists! What terrorists? There's been a big scare and you can't go across the bridges so good. If there was an active terrorist threat dire enough to close down all the bridges in Liberty City, I doubt they'd be allowing undocumented immigrants into the port now, would they? Roman isn't living in a mansion like he claimed, but a roach-infested studio apartment. Given that Liberty City is basically New York, a studio apartment with a private bath and this much space means Roman is probably paying 4k a month for it, which he likely couldn't afford since he's up to his eyeballs in debt. Uh, where's luxury condo? Where's sports car? Where's Barbara with big titties and Stephanie who sucks like a vacuum? What are you talking about? In your letters to my mother. Who sends letters about Barbara with big titties and Stephanie who sucks like a vacuum to their cousin's mother, Roman's aunt? All I needed was one good guy. One good guy I could do well. All I needed was one good guy I could take advantage of. During the war, we did some bad things. And bad things happened to us. <laughs> war is where the young and stupid are tricked by the old and bitter into killing each other. I've experienced enough online foreign policy debates to learn that Serbians never admit fault in the Balkans conflict. Just check the comments under this video for proof. I was very young. I'm very angry. Maybe that is no excuse. When I was young, I made mistakes. Things I regret. Now I'm here to make old mistakes in a new way. But maybe they won't be so bad this time that I have to regret them. This is the woman that I'm going to marry. <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> I thought you were going to marry me, baby. Yeah, well, let's say what you like. But at least that guy knows how to speak to a lady. Mallory, Roman's girlfriend, is depicted as a walking sexual harassment magnet. She never has to reckon with her own affair with a murdering Russian gangster who is tightening the screws on her boyfriend. Nico will even stand up for her when Roman is about to let her go. Nightclubs, women, titties! Roman always sounds like he's trying as hard as he can to prove that he's straight. Once you bring up women, you don't also have to mention tits and ass. I know that those come with women. They must have been told I was here. You cannot run from us forever, Mr. Roman! The loan sharks run right past Roman to reach their own car so they can chase after him and Nico. Just grab Roman and pull him out of the car instead of running past him. Since the loan sharks know where Roman works, why do they even need to track him down to the gambling den? Can you do me a favor? Mallory needs a lift. Can you go pick her up at the Hog Beach subway station? Yeah. Take the cab. She's got a friend with her. Maybe someone you can date. You know what? You need someone to show you a good time. Michelle, how about you? Mallory, stop it. Come on, you guys. You're both single. You're adults. Take her number, Nico. Hey. I'd like to see you again, Nico. Mallory and Roman have apparently known Michelle long enough to think, hey, she'd be perfect for our cousin Nico. But Michelle is actually a fed, planted here by the United Liberty Paper Company in order to get close to Nico. Somehow they know Nico will be useful to them, even though he's done nothing but get tangled up in his cousin's taxi company in a loan shark. Michelle would have had to been building this friendship with Mallory well before Nico even stepped foot in Liberty City, all on the off chance that she would run into him. Introducing her to Nico wasn't even her own idea. If it weren't for Mallory and Roman's matchmaking, Michelle would have never met Nico. Did you just move in? No. Why? All your stuff is new. Some even still have tags on. United Liberty Paper had the foresight to place her here months ago to get close to Nico, but couldn't go to a thrift shop. So, where are you taking me? I don't know. Uh, I'm new here. I thought maybe we could go to the, uh, 
Fun fair. If you lack a social life, GTA 4 is here to help by letting you pretend you have one in a video game. It always seemed like a strange thing to focus on for a GTA game, which has always been living out the fantasy of getting away with whatever crazy crime spree you could plan in your head. Why did Rockstar think we would want to spend time in between robbing banks and ramping off flatbed trucks to escape murderous gang members by calling up our NPC friends for a burger or bowling? It might have been interesting if random events could pop up during these little dates. Instead, you're left with the same handful of experiences while trying to max out your friendship level with people in order to earn their unique perk. Where is my f***ing money? I, I had it. I, I had some of it. Then those Albanians you said you would deal with came and smashed my computer. So it's my fault? Hold up a second. Roman expected Vlad to deal with the other loan sharks he owed money to. And Vlad expects Roman to repay the loan he made to him, even though Roman's not paying off his other loan and made an agreement with Vlad to deal with him so he wouldn't have to. Why would you make a loan to someone in this situation and as a stipulation wanted you to deal with his previous creditors? Go pick up my friend little Jacob. He's a good man. Likes to smoke a bit. Look after him. Why would anyone call a cab to commit crimes? Cabs are easily identified and traced back to the cab company by the police. Little Jacob even has Nico take a gun and cover him during a drug deal, which is akin to asking your Uber driver to help you deal with a nest of angry wasps. Some old men not paid me in months, and I'm not the kind of person who is treated this way. But you are. You're letting Roman get away with not paying you. Was the B team animating these cutscenes with Vlad and Nico? It's just that, Jesus Christ, they are rough. You catch him and kill him. Then we say it was just a robbery that fell. And what if I say I don't want to be your hitman? GTA 4 is full of inconsequential moral choices, allowing you to choose to kill some targets or spare them. But moral choice in a GTA game isn't a display of morals at all. So what if Nico can spare a person's life from time to time? The game is made up of a series of immoral activities that you have no choice in. Even if choices had some impact on the plot, it would still be pointless in determining Nico's morality because he's a GTA protagonist and that comes with certain expectations of gleeful ultraviolence that he will never have to answer for. I think she's messing around with Vlad. I saw his car parked outside her place the other day. Why can't Mallory mess around with Vlad if you're going to mess around with other women? You've mentioned every Pornhub tag in existence, but somehow miss polygamy. You knew? I had suspicions. You f***ing knew? What was I going to say? You knew my woman was banging this what dog and you didn't do anything? He openly flirted with her in front of you and she flirted back. Is anyone going to bring up how Mallory is a terrible person and Roman would be better off without her cheating ass? She isn't innocent in this. I'm not going to stand here and have you call me disloyal. You might let some Russian asswipe bang your woman, but I won't. It's bizarre that Nico is more upset over Vlad sleeping with Mallory than Roman taking advantage of him to help him deal with his debt problems, which Vlad used to coerce Nico into doing jobs for him. When I was in the army, we were going on the mission to ambush a squad would kill a lot of innocent people. Nico, you were on the side of the people committing war crimes. I don't think you were on a mission to ambush people who killed the innocent. There's a reason why Rockstar left all of Nico's backstory vague when it comes to details. Twelve people died, three escaped. I know the traitor was not me. So for ten years, I've been searching for the other two. One of them leaves here. Nico came to Liberty City to find the man who betrayed his unit and got most of them killed. But Nico will never actively look for these people, and the targets he's looking for end up being dropped into his lap when he happens upon people who have the right connections. Get out, man! I'm being followed! I saw them! Don't be ridiculous! You're being paranoid! He's been followed and attacked by loan sharks, and Nico just killed Vlad, who had powerful friends in the Russian mob. At some point, you have to take Roman's paranoia seriously, as evidenced by the fact that Nico gets knocked out and captured right after this. Good lord. What are you doing? What do you think he's doing? You have a torture room beneath your house. I'm sure this happens often here. Nico Bellic, you think it's okay to kill my employees? If he is an asshole, yes. Go <laughs> ahead! I agree. What you can take away from this is that if you defy expectations with your answer, a villain will kill one of his own men out of frustration. You owe me. I got some digheads in my neighborhood trying to run a shipman, yeah? And we found a buyer for the TVs. Yes, a buyer. But you've got to get them for us so we can make the sale. Mikhail had Nico brought here because he killed Vlad. And now you want to pressure Nico into working for you? The same thing that got Vlad killed? Listen, we'll take care of your cousin, but you better get the police car. And then you call me. 
Any criminal plan that begins with stealing a police car is a bad plan in my opinion, since it involves the police in step one by robbing them. Where would we be now if I was calm like you? Let me guess. In a prison camp in Siberia, or selling hash to tourists in Red Square, or still in the Navy. Which is it today? Nico does one job for Mikhail and Dimitri, and they start airing all of their dirty laundry, history, and drama in front of him. Criminals have zero discretion these days. This guy been making porno in his basement, and he didn't cut Mikhail in. At least he could have done is sent over some tapes. I never realized how much OnlyFans must be cutting into mob profits these days. You see? They don't make them like that no more. That's a vintage bush. If it wasn't for that, I'd say this weren't worth transferring to DVD. Hey! Porn producers talking about their product like it's high art is as likely as a McDonald's manager bragging about a Michelin star. Hey man, I'm here to see Jacob. It's Nico. Nico? Batman, what go on doing this up? Some boy don't say I beat off the door. Some boy don't say I call himself Nico, say want to see a road boy. Nico? I'm a boy that bad mama. Yo, free up the boy, man, yo. Are you a boy that? Yeah. Nico's first language isn't English, so I have no idea how he follows conversations with little Jacob and his friend. I can't even follow this conversation with captions on. Violent Russian mobsters go to the club not to watch Stanislavski, but this guy doing his one-man cowboy burlesque show. Prove you're loyal. Go and kill the guy. Don't question my loyalty. You don't have any. Why would you? You didn't have any for your last boss. Hell, your last two bosses. Since Nico bailed on a job in Europe and had to flee to America. You should try going online. Uh, I know how to go on the line. I just haven't done it here. <laughs> of course. Technophobe. Ludite. We gotta get you online. Listen, I promised Brucey I'd go out with him. Can you go out and get it sorted? Uh... Okay. Go to Twat and register on one of the PCs there. A pretty girl is expecting you. Why not let Nico use the office computer to pop that particular cherry instead of sending him to a web cafe? When the war came, I did bad things. And after the war, I thought nothing of doing bad things. I killed people, smuggled people, sold people. And you don't worry about your soul? <sighs> after you walk into a village, and you see 50 children, all sitting neatly in a row against the church wall, each with their throats cut and their hands chopped off. You realize that the creature that could do this doesn't have a soul. Will you help Nico rediscover his soul by occasionally sparing a criminal or two, and then choose to kill the more annoying criminal when at a crossroads? What do you want? This prig who owes me money owns a garage in Chase Point. I want you to pick up a truck and take it to him. Call me when you get to the truck. Killing someone who owes you money to send a message to others is one thing. Spending a ton of money on a truck and the explosives to blow up their business while leaving them alive but unable to pay their debts is another thing entirely. And I'm not sure what it accomplishes since they now have no way of paying Mikhail back. The Petrovic family wants revenge for the death of their son. Naturally, they decide the best way to handle this is to get the guy who killed him, Nico, to kill Mikhail Faustin. And in return, they'll let Nico off the hook. Nico's journey through Liberty City's criminal underworld is essentially one big coercion fest. First, he's strong-armed into working for Vlad, which ends with Nico killing him to protect Roman's honor. Then he's bullied into working for Mikhail Faustin. And now he has to kill him too. It's almost comical how every issue Nico faces is resolved with a quick execution to whichever boss has annoyed him the most recently. Nico arrives at the Paris Troika Club, and his nearly perfect poker face must be slipping, because Mikhail seems to know what Nico was about to do based solely off his body language. Must have recognized that tense posture one has when they're about to ask for a raise or murder the boss. Dimitri calls Nico and tells him to meet at the location where people are obviously betrayed. Little Jacob seemingly smoked enough ganja to see into the spirit world and learn this to warn Nico, who lets him come along as backup. I can't think of any other reason he would know all the details despite having no part in any of this. Dimitri's friend Bulgarin, a human trafficker Nico used to work for smuggling migrants into Italy, is here to collect money Nico apparently owes him for a failed smuggling job. How much money can Nico have possibly lost that Bulgarin would risk moving his men and entire operation to Liberty City just to find Nico? And if Bulgarin was already living in Liberty City, then Nico chose the worst location to flee from his old boss. I didn't rob you. Really? We were busted a mile off the coast. I had to swim for my life. I don't know what happened, I nearly drowned. <laughs> that implies that Nico left a ship full of immigrants to drown. Tell me again how the morality system in this game makes a bit of sense. There was no way one of Bulgarin's goons managed to come up behind Nico without spotting little Jacob hiding behind the gate. 
After Dimitri burns their apartment in the cab depot, Nico and Roman decide to lay low, and instead of leaving Liberty City, they just move to a neighboring borough. Nico came all the way to America to get away from Bulgarin. Now faced with Bulgarin and Dimitri, he can only be bothered to move uptown. We're broke and on the run. No, I'm from up here, Nico. I know a bunch of people who might be able to help out. Why don't you come and meet me at the community center later on? Does Nico look like someone who does community work without a court order? Work which is normally done on a volunteer basis for no pay. I'm surprised Nico even bothered showing up. The first half of GTA 4 is driven by the solid motivation of Nico trying to survive in Liberty City despite his cousin's screw-ups. But now Roman is safe and Nico could use this opportunity to get away from crime and violence. Nico always gives the impression that he hates what he's doing and hates himself for doing it, which is what makes him feel so much more human and relatable. But instead of taking this new opportunity, he jumps right into the orbit of criminals who hire him to do even worse things in the last batch. He's no longer doing this to protect Roman or survive. It's just about getting paid. Roman introduces Nico to Brucey, a Vin Diesel-inspired car thief. He explains his plan for killing witnesses under police protection by telling Nico to steal a police car in order to hack the computer just like Dimitri did. You don't actually hack these. You simply enter their name. Next, Brucey has Nico steal the car that belonged to the guy he just killed, which was left in an alley for some reason. As soon as Nico gets inside, friends of Lyle's roll up to stop him like they were waiting for this exact outcome. All right, let me see. I am a vulnerable guy who needs to be held by big strong arms. Lyle, the person Nico killed for Brucey, turns out his cousin owes him a lot of money and is taking a proactive stance on the matter by placing a hit on Brucey. So their plan is to lure him out by placing Nico on a gay dating site to match with him. To do so, they send Nico to an internet cafe to get started. Again, why does Nico need to go to an internet cafe in order to catfish someone when he could have used the computer Roman has on his lap? It's right there. Using a public computer in a web cafe would make it very easy for the police as well. Brucey has Nico drive him to a street race, one they would have no chance of winning because Brucey is in the passenger seat the entire time, adding weight to the car and slowing it down. Look, Brucey, I like you, and I think we should hang out, but I don't want to work with you no more. I can't go around f***ing people up because you've overdone it on the juice. Nico picks and chooses when he has morals. He doesn't want to work for Brucey anymore after he learns that Brucey suffers from roid rage which is leading him to wanting people killed. But Nico has no objections to other hit jobs that have even less morality behind them. Like Manny here, a hypocritical former gang member who wants to become famous for cleaning up the streets and hires Nico to kill a warehouse full of drug dealers so he can take credit for it. And Nico has no problem doing that. This is Nico right here. This is my man Nico. Really great way of lying low from Bulgarin and Dimitri by being filmed on camera as Manny meets the deputy police commissioner Francis McCreary. How is it that Mallory came to be friends with so many criminals, feds, and liars? She introduced Nico to Michelle, Manny, and now Elisabetta, a drug dealer overseeing a deal with Packy McCreary, a member of the Irish gang who gets Nico involved with the mafia. Most of Nico's problems come from Mallory introducing him to terrible people. Elisabetta instructs Nico, Playboy, and Johnny, a member of the Lost Biker Gang and lead of the first DLC you'll be paying extra for, to meet up for a heroin deal. It goes bad when it's discovered to be a raid by the LCPD, but I don't believe they brought any heroin with them. I didn't see any, so they're likely in the clear. I'm a lord, man, not a lady. This show is gonna make me famous. You are gonna be famous! Shit. Yo, Nico, man, what am I supposed to do here? I mean, I got this film genius here, making me look like a transsexual. Give it another decade, Manny, and you'll realize your producer's genius. You may even get a Disney show out of it. We need to go bust somebody, man. Uh, do what you want, as long as it doesn't involve me. Hey, yo, man, we're brethren, right? Give it up, man. All right, man, yo, listen, can you shut these up for me, please? Where are they? That's all it takes to get Nico to give in on his morals and kill a few people for no good reason. Why even have Nico pretend to be reluctant if he always gives in after less peer pressure than friends trying to encourage you to smoke? Do you know, boy? I know you killed Mikhail Faustin. I know a group of Russians want you dead. I know you ain't no saint. That's not exactly a glowing criminal LinkedIn. Why would anyone want Nico working for them at this point? His reputation should be radioactive. Imagine being a black Puerto Rican woman and calling an Eastern European man who speaks English as his second language with a thick accent for help understanding Rasta. But by the time Nico arrives, she already seems to know everything regarding some screw up on Jacob's part with some cocaine being stolen and then tells Nico to go fix it without even giving the man details on what he's going to go do or where. This is no place for you, Michelle. As it happens, it is. You see, Nico? I have been working for the government. Why would the government give a damn about Nico? You started watching him almost as soon as he was off the boat. How could you have possibly known he would get involved with some of Liberty City's largest criminals? And how were you already friends with Mallory to get close to him? And finally, I'm struggling to figure out how you knew anything about the coke deal by being Nico's girlfriend, when Nico himself didn't know about it until Elizabeth sent him on the mission after little Jacob screwed up. Hey, turn state! Everyone's a rat! 
not me. Nico says this right after his ex-girlfriend outed herself as a fed and told him to show off her work as an asset. Open up, man. Who is it? It's the streets, man. Okay. Do you always open the door for the streets? Manny and his cameraman show up to tell Elizabeth to stop slinging dope and she kills the both of them, then has Nico drive their bodies to a doctor for disposal. I don't think the doctor paid for the bodies, let alone Elizabeth's car, which he drives away with. Packy McCreary calls Nico over for work, where Nico meets his sister Kate. Instead of developing an interesting relationship, the camera angles do all the work suggesting these two will have a thing for each other. Packy took a job from the mafia to steal clone meds being offloaded by the Chinese mob. His plan is to kill them and then take the truck and deliver the goods to a mob boss, Ray Bacino, who takes an interest in Nico despite knowing nothing about him. If I were Packy, I'd be a little pissed at the guy who hired me for a job only asked about the help I brought along and offered him more work instead of me. And I'm looking for someone. Someone special. Yeah, you could say that. I've put more effort into finding my keys than Nico has looking for Florian. Some Italian dudes to shut down his building site on some union bull. They all up in the place, strapped to their fronts with hard hats on and shit. Won't let nobody get near him. What are you suggesting we do about it? You gonna go in there and get them mafia types off the site. Meantime, I'm gonna tell Yusuf how good we've been to him. That cat and me is gonna be tight as two cellmates on lockdown after this. Playboy has a plan to get in tight with a Middle Eastern real estate developer by taking care of union members blocking off his building site. I think the mass killing of union workers, even if they are mafia, on his property is going to curtail development more than dealing with a union. Window washing platforms sure are fast in Liberty City. This thing would launch you out of it once it rocketed to the top and slam you into the ground when going down. Ain't folk quick to forget. Hmm. Some folk. Yeah, that's the truth. Where did you get out from? Preschool. <laughs> okay! From time to time, Nico takes an odd liking for certain people. This is usually a tell for who you'll have the choice between killing in the game, and the writer's heavily weighting the plot in one character's direction. Man, I was pulling moves in the joint so this bitch could pay rent. Now she won't answer the phone. Man, I gave her everything when I was inside. Cars, houses, apartments, bank accounts, everything. You were able to pay for all that while inside prison, but can't afford to live anywhere but a rat hole apartment? Listen, why don't you go talk to her? Psh, ain't to say. Then I'll go speak to both of them. I'll ask for your money back, and if they don't agree, I'll make them. How would the two of them repay money they've already spent? Unless they were waiting for exactly the day Dwayne was released from prison. But somehow they do, since Nico takes it off their bodies even though the money should have been long gone. You know what I mean? Now he don't flash his guap too much, but you can see it in his eye. He a hustler. Eh? <sighs> Homie ain't too brawling, but he ain't scrawny neither. And he be styling on him a little, you dig? I mean, he ain't too bummy, but he grimy too. So he's the average one? Nico is the same man who had no trouble understanding little Jacob, but doesn't understand Playboy's description of a man he needs silenced. Instead, Playboy gives Nico a phone and tells him to send a pic of the people he finds at the location so he can point the guy out. Why not just tell Nico to kill all of them? They attack him as a group anyways as soon as he kills the guy Playboy wants dead. Well, I'll do it. For you, I mean. Come on, man. Stop being so miserable. What did you lose? Man, you the real deal. Nico is heavily invested in making Dwayne a player again in Liberty City, first killing his ex and her new boyfriend, and now wiping out the squatters in his old nightclub. This is a man who desperately yearns for an inward pass, and will do anything to get it. It's like he thinks it's 1992, and the best that you could hope for is a gold chain and a page. You know, he looks at me like he wants me dead. Now, I took care of business. I gave him money, but because I won't bow down to him and treat him like he the almighty, motherfucker wants to pop me. Dwayne couldn't even kill his girlfriend and the guy she was cheating on him with who took all of his money. And Nico had to shoot up the club for him. What makes you think he has it in him to come after you? And if he did, he would likely do it by asking Nico to kill you. So maybe don't allow Nico into your condo. So what you gonna do? Kill him? Hey, I didn't say that. And you cold. I was joking. What else is there? You're the one who told Nico to do errands for Dwayne, which led to him shooting up the nightclub you had a stake in. Just stop paying Nico to do things for him and the problem disappears. Yo, what you doing? You got rid of Dwayne already? I thought the old dog would have put up more of a fight. You had the choice of killing either Dwayne or Playboy. Since the game has been biased in Dwayne's favor, you can add Playboy to the list of bosses that Nico has to kill. And in this case, one that never even screwed him over. Nico was just closer to getting that inward pass from Dwayne rather than Playboy. I think Roman has been kidnapped. I heard he owes the Russians money. 
Roman is indebted to more Russians. There's a level of adorable degeneracy that can get you past and over some bad decisions. But when you consider all the problems Roman's money problems have put Nico through, no amount of bowling or big American titties is going to make up for this. I heard they took him to a warehouse off Lompoc and Bohan and Dutch. Somehow Mallory heard that the Russians who grabbed Roman took him to a warehouse in Bohan. Just how do you hear about that without being there to overhear it? What kind of connections do you have, lady? And stop thinking about the Russians. Men, we just need to disappear as far as I can say. Disappear! Okay, okay. But I want Florian and Darko. I need to know what happened. Give me that. Had you actually done some searching for them, maybe you'd have a lead by now. This is the first time you've even mentioned their names. Packy introduces Nico to his brothers Derek and Gary. They're robbing the Liberty City Bank today and Nico decides to tag along, as one casually does when committing a major felony that is likely to end an arrest or a nationwide manhunt given the body count they rack up while escaping. Banks don't keep much physical money inside them these days, and any money you do steal from them is going to be too hot to use, making robbing them a pretty terrible target. Now listen people, we're your friends. Me and me brother here. Why are you telling him we're brothers, you idiot? That's gonna make it hard for him to find us, isn't it? Louise, the main character from The Ballad of Gay Tony, is inside the bank during the robbery, on the floor with a member of the local gun club who wants to play hero. The guy shoots his shot once Packy and his brother Derek get into an argument and give away details of their identities, killing the third member of the gang, which they leave there and would be an incredibly easy lead for the police to trace back to Packy and the McCreary since he's a relative, especially after the argument Packy and Derek just had in your shot of the civilians. The plan is to shoot their way out of the front door of the bank past all the police and escape on foot into the subway tunnels. A subway has very clear exits that police can easily cordon off, but that doesn't happen here, and they steal a car and drive back to Packy's home. An interview? Sure. It'll be easy. You're an immigrant. They're almost legally bound to interview you. Can't say this game didn't predict a lot of current job market realities. The guy's name is Tom Goldberg. Thinks he's got something on me. Gonna go to the DA with it. Use it to get into Congress. Lawyers tend to back up important files and documents. Stealing the file on Francis's corruption from the lawyer's desk isn't going to stop the information from being presented. It still exists digitally. So listen, I got something I need you to do. This is the last time. Of course. Why do you even do all these horrible crimes for people, only to then tell them you're fed up working for them? You aren't doing them favors. You're taking hit jobs for cash, and then you go to work for the next and repeat the process. I send you to destroy an organization, and you only make the boss disappear. Now his chief lieutenant is holed up in an apartment, and he wants to speak to the Fed. Whoa. When you're hiring someone as a contract killer, you specify everyone you want killed because they're not going to give you freebies. Plus, this is a GTA game. You don't really have options on how to complete missions. You complete them the way the game tells you to complete them, or you fail. I left a rifle for you in the trunk of a car at the corner of Albany and M. People keep leaving the weapons Nico will need to do the job at the exact location when they could probably just do the job themselves while they're dropping it off. Bombs in an alley off of Inchin Avenue. Get it? Give me a call. Why would you leave the explosive device behind a dumpster in the city instead of just having it here to give to Nico so he can bomb the Mafia's car? What purpose did it serve to leave it there, out in the open, where anyone could find it? I do it myself, but I think I'm being watched by the cops. Someone. I think I'm about to get pinched again. Really? Yeah, it's happened before. I keep seeing the same car watching. Wild that Gary would be the McCreary under investigation when he hasn't been there for any of the crimes like Nico and Packy. There's a few degrees of separation between him and any criminality. There's no way he would go down without his brothers going down first. How did your sister and mother never discover the dead Albanian you're keeping in the fridge? He's clearly been in there for a while. Mick bastard friend of yours says you're okay. Good. That you're reliable. Yep. But can I trust you? It says here on your resume, Mr. Bellick, that you've killed every boss you've worked for. Tell me, where do you see yourself in the next two weeks in this organization? Seems this guy does not respect the waste management business. Lives over in a project on Galveston near you. Name is Teddy Benavidez. Do what you gotta do. Have you noticed just how many missions end with Nico chasing someone to the roof so that when he kills them, you get to watch as they fall and ragdoll? Rockstar was a little too impressed with the Euphoria physics engine at the time. Speaking of the ice. Yeah, they got it. They, they left it where you said. The Lost placed the diamonds in garbage bags throughout the city, and Nico has to drive a garbage truck around while Ray's men grab the bags. Hiding diamonds in garbage isn't the greatest idea in a city where people regularly go dumpster diving and the homeless sift through trash for anything useful. I got two options. Option one, you rip me off. Option two, Luca and his buddies rip this bolt off. Hey, hey, I left them with the stuff to bring to you as instructed. Maybe you're in on it. Maybe I am. But if you thought that, I wouldn't be standing here right now. 
the mob garbage collectors who spent the whole mission talking about how scary Ray is and what crossing him would mean, try to make off with the diamonds. And Ray gets upset when Nico kills the guys who are trying to rip him off, which tells me the garbage men didn't know what the hell they were talking about. I keep doing these favors for you and you pay sh**. I need this from you. I guarantee that you will find this man. I know he's in the city. So either you give me your word or go f yourself. I'm sick of this sh**. Fine! You mean Nico could have been asking for that instead of money this whole time? I'm sure Ray would have loved paying information rather than cash. Ray sends Nico to meet up with Johnny to sell the diamonds to... Huh. How about that? Jewish stereotypes aside, I'm thinking holding an illegal diamond cell with armed men inside a museum is a poor choice. It's not exactly low-key, and there tend to be a lot of security to protect the art there, as well as no shortage of cameras. Louise disrupts the exchange and Johnny grabs the money and runs. Moments like this where all three main characters are in the same place are always quickly cut off and they're separated from each other to make sure they don't interact any further. I think Nico, Johnny, and Louise actually conversing and developing a bit is a missed opportunity. Ray came through with a possible lead on Florian Kravich. Florian can't be the person who screwed over Nico's unit during the war because he's gay. That's the only thing Nico needs to trust his word. Where is Darko? Dead, I hope! Uh, I'm not sure. I, I, I heard he was still in Europe or Switzerland or somewhere. The last Florian heard of Darko, he was in Europe somewhere. So Nico's search is essentially screwed since he followed the wrong guy to the wrong country. Nico won't do anything from here on out to find Darko, but instead just assumes someone else will find the guy for him. Dimitri is blackmailing Florian's boyfriend, the deputy mayor. So Nico kills the two goons he sends to negotiate and that's that. Dimitri never reveals his blackmail information to the media. According to Nico, by killing the two men, he intimidated Dimitri into not releasing it. Yes, Nico, the guy who wants Dimitri dead and has said as much over the phone to him. That intimidated him. If it were that easy, Dimitri wouldn't be a problem. He told me about Vlad. He did? Yeah, thanks for helping him get rid of the body. He has such fire in his heart. I guess when he found out about me and Vlad, he couldn't help himself. His love for me took over and he just had to kill him. Mallory phones Nico to tell him she and Roman are getting married. They had a heart to heart and Roman took credit for killing Vlad. And Mallory believes that and thinks it's so romantic. It's as if she possesses toxic innocence that allows her to cheat on Roman with criminals, introduce Nico to the worst people in the city, and everyone still treats her like a goddamn angel. That curly head leech is gonna talk! Go shut that stooge up! Shut who up? Isaac! Ray said curly-haired leech. But what he asked Nico to go do is kill a bunch of Jewish men. Nico begins doing dirty work thwarting potential terrorists for United Liberty Paper after Michelle revealed she worked for them. If he doesn't cooperate, they will turn him over to the police along with the evidence. I'm not sure what evidence they have, since Nico never committed crimes in front of Michelle. For their first order, they want Nico to find information on a man named Oleg Minkov. This organization was able to predict that Nico would be a useful asset before he even arrived and place an operative with Roman's girlfriend just to get close to him. And they need Nico to search for this person's apartment and kill him. They already know where he lives. They could have sent anyone. Now get access to a police computer and wait for my message. Go! Why would Nico need to steal a police car to use their computer to find someone for you? You guys should have access to criminal records and personal files. You're a black site government agency dealing with threats against national security. You have to have that on hand. Derek asks Nico to kill his old drinking buddy, Aiden O'Malley, who's being moved to a new prison. The moment Nico accepts the request, he receives a phone call from Packy, who just heard about it and has already stashed a rocket launcher inside a truck for him in an alley near the location. There's convenience and then there's precognition. I use the Euphoria engine to make Aiden's death look like an accident. Technically, he died to the wonky physics of this world. Frankie learns that his brother Derek is back in town and is worried he will ruin his chance of becoming commissioner and wants Nico to kill him. You can choose to kill Frankie instead though, which again is what I assume 99% of people do because of the plot weighting the decision in Derek's favor. Regardless of who you kill, Nico is still closely tied to the McCreary's, remaining good friends with Packy and dating Kay despite the fact that he killed one of their brothers, which he never bothers to reveal to them. Whichever the brothers you kill, a funeral will be held for them. I chose Frankie, so I have to send this for it not being a police funeral since Frankie was a cop. But there are zero police present, which works out gameplay-wise, since Albanians crash Frankie's funeral to kill the McCreary's. After killing the first wave of Albanians, Packy has you drive Frankie's body over to the cemetery like a gang war didn't just happen at the funeral. It's okay to delay a funeral for attempted mass killings. Luckily, if you kill enough of them, they allow you to drop the coffin into the ground in peace. Give Packy a call. He'll explain what, uh... I need guidance with the most. 
Gary summons Nico to the prison so he can tell him to call Packy once he leaves, since he can't very well give details on kidnapping a mob boss's daughter over a prison phone. He didn't need Nico to come all the way to the prison for that. He could have just called and told Nico to call Packy for details, instead of coming all the way to the prison to do the exact same thing. Really? None of the McCreary's watching over Gracie have a cell phone with a camera to take a ransom photo? I think you and her should go out on a glamorous date in Algonquin. Nico has to meet Gary in prison to receive an update on Gracie's hostage situation. I don't see why Packy couldn't have called Nico to tell him that Gracie needs to be moved to a new location. Hell, since Packy will be the one watching her from now on, he could have gone and picked her up and left Nico out of it. Packy will give you a call and explain. The ex-boyfriend of your girl is going to agree to the divorce terms. And Nico will need one more meeting with Gary to learn that Gracie's father has agreed to pay the ransom. If Gary can receive all this information inside prison without arousing suspicion, he can let Nico know over the phone in code as well. The exchange goes down with Gay Tony paying Gracie's ransom with the diamonds, but Bulgarin shows up, after having such a profound impact on the plot so far, to take the diamonds back. Somehow his men, who had snuck up right alongside Nico and Packy, failed to kill them even with the element of surprise. I think we can all agree you should be dead if multiple people open fire on you from just a few feet away with AK-47s. During the firefight, one of Bulgarin's men throws a bag of diamonds into the back of a passing gravel truck, ending a subplot that threads its way from the beginning of this game to the end and through the two DLC episodes as well, yet never manages to go anywhere or do anything interesting. The guy's gotta go, but I need to know his movements first. Huh? I've got something that's going to help you. Head over to Albany Avenue in Lansing and give me a call. Nico's handler, a United Liberty paper, has him still a chopper that they want to use to kill a target that routinely flies over Liberty City in his own chopper. The plan is, Nico will fly the chopper close while little Jacob shoots the chopper down with a rocket. I must have missed the explanation for why they couldn't just shoot the chopper down while on the ground with a guided missile. You know, the thing portable anti-air missiles are designed to do, which you can safely shoot while standing on the ground. Ray introduces Nico to Phil. Another member of the Pegarino crime family, who has him still a truck full of heroin from the triad. Simple enough on the face of it, but Rockstar isn't done showing off their Euphoria physics engine, so you can't simply shoot the driver and take the truck. Nico has to grab onto the back bumper, then slowly climb over the truck to get inside the cab instead of bringing the truck to a halt and opening the driver's side door. I know enough about you, your cousin, your friends. I know a lot of people around you end up in jail. You should also know that Nico has killed almost every person he's ever worked for. How do Nico's potential employers like Mr. Pegarino keep overlooking that detail? My personal bodyguard wearing a wire! Pegarino's bodyguard Anthony has been wearing a wire this whole time. Somehow Pegarino scared the guy over the phone into having a heart attack, and now he's being held at the hospital under police protection. Killing Anthony now would only be retribution. It might deny them a witness on the stand, but it wouldn't stop the state who already have recordings of Pegarino and his dealings. With all the turmoil going on in the Pegarino family, Mr. Pegarino thinks someone is squealing to the police and he needs to shut them up. Only he doesn't know who it is, so he decides to have Nico kill either Ray or Phil, eventually choosing Ray, meaning Nico has to kill another one of his old bosses who never did him any wrong. I ain't got much time left. Our mutual friend told me everything. Nico's handler, a United Liberty paper, sends him to see the mob boss Gravelli in the hospital. Seems like a weird contact for a mob boss to keep, given their distrust of anything that smells like a fed. Ernie Crane? His boyfriend? He's being blackmailed. By them damn Russians. They want him to put certain contracts up for tender. I already dealt with that situation with Bernie's boyfriend. Nico just had to kill two guys Dimitri sent, and that intimidated him into not releasing the blackmail information to the press. Apparently that wasn't enough. So Nico has to protect a politician from assassination so he can address City Hall and Russian organized crime. Something that has Dimitri shaking enough to send an assassination squad. The police have a file on you an inch thick in exchange for that. In exchange for that guy you've been asking about being brought here from wherever it is he's hiding. Keeping police off Nico's back is starting to sound like bullshit. Both Francis and United Liberty Paper have promised the same thing. And out of all three of them, only one of them seems to be capable of doing it. What we're saying is, this is a matter of security. <laughs> national. Normally, I don't care about cocaine. Keeps controllable people in power. But this is no good. All right, what's my role in this? The distribution network is a fleet of vans parked at a grocery warehouse in Alderney City. The product is packed into the frames of the vans, ready to be moved all over the country. Gravelli and Nico's handler want him to destroy Russian vans that are packed full of cocaine. Apparently this is a matter of national security. I guess they don't know about the truck full of heroin Nico stole with Phil that they're also planning to package inside cars. If they know where these vans are, just send in the cops to arrest the Russians and take the vans. Because that's exactly what happens when Nico and Phil try to move their heroin. Felix, I have your man. He's been flown in. We're 
We're going to drop him in the airport cargo area for Nico's handler delivers Darko Brevik as promised for all the work Nico did for the paper company, dropping him in an inconspicuous location for an extrajudicial killing. A goddamn international airport. How much? <laughs> a thousand. <laughs> you killed my friends for one thousand dollars. How much do you charge to kill someone? You ruined me, you Darko is a broken shell of a man who sold out Nico and his unit for a mere thousand dollars. This isn't the dramatic climax full of answers from the man who ruined his life that Nico expected. I understand the direction they're going with, that all this has been a waste of Nico's time and will not make him happy, but it hardly feels like Nico spent enough time or emotion on it for me to consider it a waste. I forgot this was Nico's reason for coming here for most of the game, and all the searching was done by other people. Nico simply had too little skin in his own revenge plot. It hardly matters if you kill Darko or let him go. This is less of a moral dilemma than running over pedestrians on the sidewalk when they're in your way. I need a favor. Here we go. Nico's disinterest in the work he's offered would probably get him killed. Contract killing and organized crime expect some commitment to the job, since everyone involved has their life on the line, and someone who's checked out is more likely to talk if arrested. This isn't a line of work where you can act like a disaffected Zoomer who hates his job. I got some Russians who have a buyer. Russians? Yeah. Dmitry Raskolov. Mo, we've got the history. Pegorino has one last job for Nico helping Dimitri move the heroin Phil and Nico stole. Understandably, Nico is reluctant to work with a man who betrayed him and has attempted to kill him. But I'm more surprised Dimitri would be willing to work with Nico again after he killed nearly every boss he had and swore to kill Dimitri. You either decide to take the job or kill Dimitri on the ship. I can't think of any good reason why Nico waited until now to take care of Dimitri. The guy has been calling and threatening Nico ever since he killed Mikhail for him. Depending on your choice, Roman's wedding will be shot up by Pegorino or one of Dimitri's men, and either Kate or Roman is killed. Roman dying has some actual weight to it since you actually got to know him, but Kate has had hardly any meaningful character development, and interacting with her has relied almost exclusively on you deciding to take her on dates. I suppose this is an improvement over the likes of GTA 3, where Claude kills his girlfriend for being annoying after saving your life. No matter which ending you choose, the final mission is Nico killing his former boss. You really shouldn't be too surprised by that one. Nico follows Pecorino's men to an old dock, where he gets into a boat to escape. Rather than taking the boat across open water, he drives it right along the shore so Nico can follow along on a dirt bike. Somehow Roman and little Jacob manage to get their hands on an armed attack helicopter, and little Jacob knows how to fly it. Did they enter a cheat code to get this thing? I have no idea where it came from. You can land and let Nico on instead of having him ramp off an incline to grab on midair. Pecorino isn't getting away when you can fly after him. Would you reach down and pull Nico up instead of making me mash the space key? Just because in the other ending you're dead doesn't mean you can't be helpful in this one. Pegorino has guided missiles on his speedboat. This mob boss prepares better than a government black ops group for taking down a helicopter. I suffered from writer's block while writing this script. Thankfully, Rockstar seemed to suffer from it as well while working on the game, which would explain why the finale just sort of shows up once the game has exhausted itself. They couldn't even decide on a primary antagonist by the end and let you choose who to put the final bullet in under the Statue of Liberty. Neither Dimitri nor Pegorino makes for a satisfying conclusion, since Pegorino was only recently introduced and Dimitri has largely been missing since the first act. Thanks for watching the entire video. In today's TikTok and YouTube Shorts algorithm dominated world, watching a 45 minute long video is becoming a rare thing. If you want to keep watching my really long videos, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe buttons. And if you need even more content, you can subscribe to my Patreon, where I exclusively send DLC and older games. I'm going to be sending Grand Theft Auto 3 on it soon, along with the DLC for GTA 4. I also now have a Ko-Fi link down below for those who want to support me without a monthly subscription. And you can find my Twitch and Discord links there as well. Special thanks to patrons Xavier Destalis, Notorious SKP, Max Headroom, DJ Nelson, Azaneth the Succubus, Musical Pumpkin, Ashley P, Pedro, Castlemania, Zinro, Michelle C, Yaroslav Golubev, John Frazier, Dennis O'Brien, Malrose, Jake B, Donald Talbot, Montezuma, Cheshire XX13, Aaron Hines, Sky is Under, Eric Kisser, Shadow Wolf Gaming, Purple Jaeger, Church Quinones, Storm Queen Suki, S Venus, Mario Neto, Ben Hotty, Gellis, Biohazard, and Charmsy. And a big thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon. See you next time.